Yeah, so I'm, it's not remote sensing talk um, that is tagged. Um, and also, this whole project is a little bit following some sort of uh, conference-driven development. So um, we always set ourselves so milestones for conferences, and we, with, like it's with milestones, you usually are not able to, uh, to, to match with them. So this project has so many um, unforeseen changes that um, maybe what I was writing in the rep in the initially a few months ago um, is not exactly as it should is it is today. Um, yeah, so I'm um, Geo Republic is not a, is another country, um, but uh, our so our the people working for for this company are quite distributed and from Rwanda is the latest one and. And then recently somebody from Samoa sta uh, joined, and so I have to readjust the map because <laughs> that didn't really work well. So I have to change this completely. So Samoa is somewhere. I like how New Zealand's on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and actually this is a project that, that is funded by an organization called AIST, the National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology in Japan. And so they have a big plan. They want to make a geospatial uh, pl a platform for point clouds for everyone who generates point clouds in Japan. And there's a lot of data generated in Japan. And so they want to do many things. And they have a, a data center called ABCI. I think it's, it's one of the most powerful. Uh, it's just released in August in a very, very powerful uh, supercomputer. Um, and so this is, <coughs> yeah. We should, we should help them to collect the data. And it's mostly point cloud data, but later we found out uh, this doesn't apply only for point cloud data. And so what is Dotloom? Initially, we said it's a peer-to-peer -peer distribution and processing software for very large geospatial data sets. Um, yeah, and uh, wh why do we need this? Um, because we found out that big data is really, really hard to handle. And we have many projects that involve big data and for normal, for, for my mother, 10 megabyte is already big data, <laughs> um, if she wants to send me that. And for other people, 100 megabyte. And for me, also, one gigabyte already is quite annoying to, to, to send somewhere. And so we have customers that send us 50 gigabyte or a terabyte. And how do you send that? Um, by mail, with hard disk. And so I think before actually doing some cool stuff, we, 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 we have to struggle with the transport of the data. And um, it's also quite inefficient to do that. Um, so how often have I have downloaded uh, an OSM Planet file and then forgot about it and downloaded it again one week later? And so I always download everything. And m in my theory, 99% um, of all data downloaded is kind of thrown away a few days later or a few weeks later. And maybe my neighbor downloaded it already. So it's very inefficient how we handle big data at the moment. And um, yeah, so we thought. Um, we, we found out something, uh, distributed web. Uh, that's, that's the new trend, peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. And so we uh, read about this DAT project. Um, it's, a, it's a data sharing synchronizing pro project. And the biggest problem on this project is uh, the name, because when you search for DAT, you find many things, but not DAT project. And so we gave it a different name, and we called it dot .loom. Um, that's how the name uh, was decided. And so what we, what we actually needed was a way to easily, quickly, and securely share uh, very large point cloud data. Then we wanted to browse and search through that, these data sets and just selectively pick what we wanted to download. Not everything, and then ch choose later, but um, selectively, um, like with, the, uh, with this uh, GeoTIFF format, just, just take what we need. And also, we want to make this uh, streamable so that we can already do processing when the data comes in. Yeah, so um, here's something we thought. Uh, it's, I almost ex explained it, like uh, quickly share 10 gigabyte, um, then uh, browse it selectively and choose, what to choose the right one, and the processing pipelines. So um, what is the DAT project? The DAT project uh, defines the DAT protocol, and it's Distributed sync, uh, it improves the speed of download because it downloads from multiple peers at the same time. And it uh, stores data efficiently. And a little bit, I would say, it's a bit of Git, and it's a bit of Dropbox, and it's a bit of BitTorrent. Um, 
And so to, to show you maybe um, a bit why it looks like, why it's like Git. So there's a command line interface. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just before it worked, but maybe because I've turned it off. Yeah, but it's not, it's not so it's not a big deal. Um, yeah. How to get out of this? Yeah, it is. It's okay. It's okay. So it's it's not it's not really important. So it was just a screencast how you uh, type in did sync uh, dot sync and then. Um, you can actually try it out yourself. Um, it's, it's very similar. It feels a bit like Git. Um, and you share, and you know how many peers you have. And um, because a command line tool is not really useful for, for, the, people, for the people we target, um, we are currently working on something that is called Dutch Desktop. It's uh, an electron-based application that should be able to do already many things. But uh, we started rewriting it with React. And so, um, yeah, we are quite quite delayed, and so you can create dot archives from from these local folders, and you can download and synchronize these dot archives. And so, in terms of uh, point clouds, we want to add features like uh, preview the data um, inside, uh, publish to specific nodes. Um, we also want to introduce some some centralized place where you can register your 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 URLs, and uh, where you can trigger processing and uh, indexing. Let's see if it works now. OK, now it works. OK, so in, in this case, it's very similar. So you have this uh, desktop ap application on the top, and you have something you want to share here on the bottom. Um, Maybe. So all, all you need for sharing something is a URL, a dot URL, which is a hash key. Um, that does not change. You add it, and then you can uh, you see how your data synchronizes. <coughs> and with these uh, three dots, you can also see how many peers already have a copy of your data. And on the command line interface, you can see that you are you're sharing 1.9 gigabyte of data and 200 files and how many connections you have and uh, upload, download. So it's a bit the BitTorrent, BitTorrent style. And when you uh, stop it, um, like say you, you lose the internet connection, like in Dropbox, then it stops syncing. And when you connect again, um, then it's, it starts syncing again. Uh, you can actually see inside um, your archive, what kind of data you have. This is just metadata, so you don't need to download everything before. You have kind of uh, an index of your, of your directory, and you also have an information of the, about the version, because you might have different versions in the internet out there, depending on when people were online and offline. And so it's, it's quite exciting to try it out. Um, yeah, and you will later, I will later tell you why it's not so fun to actually uh, work on it. So, okay. Okay. So something we are, we want to add now, and we have actually started already. Um, we are using this index that is created, um, or we, we use this file index and sharing the link to remotely index data. So um, we, we don't want to download something for indexing it. So we just uh, we let some, some bot crawl through the data and just read the header files and write an index. So you, can, you, can, uh, you, you don't have to first uh, collect the data at, at one place. And also, in the same way, we want to do uh, processing remotely possible. So you just read from a dot link, which can read uh, data from multiple peers. <coughs> And you can also publish this immediately again into something that you publish to a peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, so in our case, we have some, some, some users in mind. Um, so one, one case uh, is, for example, a surveying company. 
Um, that's some customers we have. Uh, they, they require an easy upload uh, of raw surveillance data. And at the moment, they often send us hard disks because it's much faster. And they have so much, they have troubles with their network and, and policies. And uh, yeah, they need some processing pipelines to get this data like uh, further processed. And then they want to quickly also um, um, create this created data. They want to also um, make it available to their customers. And uh, the other use case we had in mind was the data scientist. Um, so that, that person needs uh, like uh, good access to the data resources, also needs to know that this data source is exactly what he, what he wants. So it's not just uh, osmplanet.pbf or some, some file name that doesn't say anything. Um, so the, the dot archi archive guarantees you that uh, with this URL, uh, you get a version that only the person who has the private key uh, can have created. So it guarantees authorship. Um, then you can, yeah, you want to apply custom processing algorithms and uh, also want to publish the data um, easily. And then I thought also about the self-driving vehicle because that's the word you have to, you have to uh, say in, in Japan these days. So if you want to get research grants, so cars actually collecting a lot of data, but it's, c it's so much data that you, you actually can't get it out of the car and cars are connected and disconnected to the internet, but you actually have a very good connection point when you charge it. And so we thought with the synchronization, you could actually get at this point all your data uh, out to the, for, for other users. So it's a big waste of uh, sensors, right? I don't know if this data is used elsewhere or just used in the car at the moment. And so we are currently develop developing here and there. So we have uh, a prototype of the um, processing framework. The DAT desktop is now yeah, rewritten and uh, now, now we can add some, some more interesting features. The indexing service we didn't have a time for. We actually wanted to uh, add support for the DAT, the DAT URL into Pottery. That means that you can read from multiple peers the nodes, uh, the, the, the data. And uh, at this point, the EPT format appeared. And this is also a bit, everything's a bit delayed. So I don't know the status about this format. So there's a lot to do. But the reality is that, um, yeah, the reality is that uh, we are struggling with the following. So one more time, uh, the traditional idea, or the motivation, uh, actually, and difficulty compared is that downloading is um, quite hard um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, also, it's also difficult. Um, so the motivation for uploading is actually very low. So people, they, they have a high motivation to download data, but they don't have a high motivation to upload data. And a lot of our, so we had built some CCAN platforms and they were built once and never updated. So I find that, that sharing data is actually, um, yeah, the motivation is too low that people actually do it. And so this is something, uh, but the acceptance of the current schema is quite okay. So people upload, download using uh, FTP or browsers. And uh, we want to change it and we want to um, make downloading uh, easier and also mostly uploading easier. And uh, the problem is that we are using peer-to-peer and this is a bad word. <laughs> so acceptance is the, our big issue. And I just recently went to a Phosphor-G conference where I got this t-shirt and I had to sign that I'm not using peer-to-peer -peer software to get internet access. And uh, actually it would be much easier to develop a software for lab labeling and shipping data by mail. <laughs> so we would already have finished, <laughs> but it's too much fun to stop. <laughs> so yeah, so we have lots of, lots of obstacles. And the biggest one is this peer-to-peer uh, -peer issue, opening ports. Uh, then also the community is a little problem. Of uh, <coughs> We are using a lot of Node.js and the project is also very distributed <laughs> and uh, people tend to make tons of NPM uh, libraries. And it's much more work than we thought. And yeah, this technology is for early adopters. So you never know what happens. And my, my I think actually, um, many people say, bring the software to the data. Um, that's the, the, the best thing, but I think it's better to say, make the data accessible where it's created. So with this kind of dot link, 
you could uh, collect the data where it's created and then people could just retrieve what they want. Nobody has to upload anything. You just need to download. Yeah. Any questions? So if, if you're interested, that's currently a bit the development area. Yeah. Um, with the files being stored on the different nodes, I got the impression that um, it would be a complete file stored on the node, or is it also partial files or some <laughs> content scattered around different You nodes? mean a peer-to-peer -peer node? Yeah. Um, so the, the publisher, of course, has the whole data. So it's the, 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 the also, and then when you when you create, so when you when you receive this link, this stat link, uh, and you, cr you you sync to your node, you can actually choose. So the, the protocol and also the implementations of the protocol allow you to selectively sync. So you don't have to synchronize everything, but the current tools usually just sync everything. Um, yeah. Um, so if, if the publisher like updates a data set, can it just do double changes and that kind of thing? Or would they have, if a publisher updates the data set yes. that they've already shared, can users just pull like a delta change to it or would they have to download it? Yeah, uh, so, it's, it's like, so there's actually a competition to this that project, it's called IPFS. And so the one, one big difference of, of this one is that um, the URL does not change when the data changes. So you can start with an empty, uh, directory and, and index this, and then when you add data, um, so it increases the ver increases the version, and so you, you know uh, you know if your version is right or not right, but you cannot make a diff because we don't so it does not store uh, by default. Uh, <coughs> like if you would store big data in Git, then you would get a, a huge problem with uh, increasing Git repositories right? if things change a lot. So this doesn't store uh, for historical data. But you could implement something that takes snapshots from time to time at specific versions. But you have to store them somewhere else. And this is nothing uh, built in. But it basically versions, and it, it tells you what happened over time. But it doesn't keep the old. Uh, you, you cannot roll back if you didn't have a copy somewhere else. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, data version can be hard. So actually, the like some some kind of uh, tile tile storage or these kind of things. Um, the first thing is you could have multiple copies. You have DNS automatically, um, not uh, CDN automatically. So um, if somebody in your local network already created a copy, uh, then you didn't have to fetch it from Amazon or somewhere. It could be used from the from the local network. Um, and yeah, so you could have sparse copies. So. Um, there could be multiple locations where you end yeah, because it's a folder folder format, like it's it's stored in folders and files. It works actually quite well. And we wanted to use the pottery pottery format initially, and contribute that to PDAL. Yeah. But uh, then Howard Butler said no. Yeah. We don't want to have the pottery format, and so he said we are working on the EPT. And so we are waiting <coughs> that this is kind of yeah stable. 